Here we go again. Start of a new week. We're, we're off. So, um, John? Yeah, a couple things this morning. Uh, first and foremost, thank you. We had an amazing power of food. Uh, we did the sorting of it uh, yesterday after the 1030 service. Just, uh, we restocked our food pantry. We've got a lot of great things going to St. Stephen's as well. Um, thank you all for your generosity, for scheduling, you know, dropping off, for communicating as well as you did. Thank you for all the volunteers who've helped after worship to get things where they needed to go. Um, we are going to try to find a way to transport this stuff to St. Stephen's. I need to figure out which day works best, so I may need one or two loaders and, and drivers to help me get all this good stuff up there. Uh, so stay tuned for that uh, later this week. Uh, but the other thing, small groups are starting September 13th. Uh, there is a Sign Up Genius link in our This Week at St. Phillips. Uh, there's another standalone email for that. Uh, your regularly scheduled groups are meeting, so please, uh, if you want to sign up for our study through the Book of Acts for this semester, uh, click the link, and we'll get you all the information you need to know. Yeah. Uh, of course, most of you have heard by now, Russ McCauley passed away. Russ was yeah. our senior member, is 101 years old, so, um, you know, it's just a, a sad loss for yeah, all of we're us. We're feeling He's it today. Kind of the grandfather of our congregation, so, um, so we definitely miss Russ today, and uh, keeping Greg and... Doug and their whole family in, in our prayers. prayers and everything. So, um, so yeah, just uh, if you want to send uh, a card, uh, I would send it to Russ's address right in the directory mm. um, if you wanted to send a card to the family and whatnot. So, um, so John, why don't we get on with things? We're going to go to Matthew 16, 21 to 28. That was our gospel from yesterday. You really didn't leave a whole lot from your sermon. That no, was, you, you, it was long. You went for it. It was long. It was, it was a long sermon. If you haven't listened to it, fabulous sermon. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so here we go. This is what it sounds like. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Very truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So, a um, lot in there, to yeah. be sure. Um, we were kind of drawn today, John and I were talking off camera, we were drawn to the last verse, which is probably the verse, maybe the only verse, maybe the second only verse that I didn't talk about yesterday, yeah. which is truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So, um, so John, this gets wrapped up in a lot of high Christian theology. It really does. Um, that... Um, that really gets convoluted sometimes moving between um, kind of the more evangelical fundamentalist mm -hmm. and the Roman Catholic mainline Protestant. So I'll give just a quick overview that we were talking about. That's going to be really helpful. And then, for this. then I'll turn it to you and we can kind of talk about the imminence of what is going on here. So, like, if you come from a tradition that is kind of more Baptist, fundamentalist, evangelical, or if you pay attention to a lot of the rhetoric that's out there mm -hmm. about the end of the world and all of that, um, it comes from what we call premillennialist thinking. The idea that there is going to be this period of time, this tribulation that people are going to live through 
um, until the very end when the Son of Man comes and, you know, there's a great reckoning of some kind and there's all of this turmoil and upheaval during that. So if you are of the bent that you are evangelical, Baptist, fundamentalist, you are in the premillennialist camp. And that means that someday you think there's going to be this great rapture and then there's going to be all these signs, importance in heaven and blah, 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 blah. And that's when it's all going to go crazy until, you know, the end of the tribulation when Christ rides in on his horses and everything's made good. Yeah, yes. it's really colored by, I think, a, a very literal reading of the book of Revelation. Revelation, Thessalonians, parts of Math, Mark. Yeah. And, and it pieces together this is this the scene Roman Catholics and mainline Protestants so essentially those who have been around from the beginning or who picked up at the Reformation yeah more or less are not premillennialists they're postmillennialist which means after which means that we generally believe and the Catholics have believed from the beginning mm -hmm that we are living in the end times, that we have been living in the end times since the death and resurrection of Jesus, mm -hmm. that the death and resurrection of Jesus inaugurated in kind of the kingdom of God that is here, but not already. Yeah. And, and you've heard us, in, in particular, John, Some talking of my about... phrases. Already yeah, and already, not yet. Already, but not yet. And, and, and Paul's theology... Definitely picks up mm -hmm. on that. The Apostle Paul and his writings. There's a theme of already and not yet playing all through that. But there is in the Gospels as well. Yep. And that's really been the understanding since the beginning of time, since these things were written and everything. It wasn't until maybe about uh, the 1870s, 1860s, 1870s, I think more 1870s, Yeah. that you began to get your itinerant preachers and this kind of fundamentalist evangelical movement began to come, come through. And then you got this post-millennialist or this pre-millennialist kind of thinking. Yeah. Again, like John said, coming through with a very literal, and in my opinion, very um, uh, unscholarly way of looking at it. It really isn't supported by scripture, but it is supported by popular... Uh, fiction novels. Yeah, the Left Behind series. Left Behind really series. Great at that. Um, you know, the Seventh Sign movies. So we get yeah. we get a lot of movies that kind of pick up on these themes, um, because that's what people like to hear. They want to hear this. It, it's kind of been Hollywoodized yeah, a little bit. It really um, has. And really I think, has. I think one of the things that really kind of connects up with where I think that line of thinking goes. The premillennialist line? Yeah. Okay. Um, is this notion of, I think you use the word off camera, of expediency. That there's this, you get in, the, in those camps, you got to get right with the Lord before this happens. This happens. Right. But then you also kind of get it here too, of, of Jesus is talking before that passage of uh, you know take up your cross and follow me and you know all of these you know there's this you know there's work to be done and jesus will reward those who do the work and you know and punish those who who don't uh, and it's really kind of hard to take and this is one of those really interesting parts of scripture where denominationally we take it very differently where you know you know Protestants of the evangelical bent take it as this is your cue of you know, get straight, yourself right with the Lord out of the mouth of Jesus. Right. It's coming, and you better be ready for it. Right. Whereas I think, as we were talking about this, there's this notion of don't wait, don't be. You know, Jesus is saying all of these things on the way to the cross, where we get the fullest picture of the kingdom of. Mm -hmm. You know, the Messiah who isn't, you know, a political pundit, isn't a king, isn't a warrior, is a servant who who dies a criminal's death. And, and you get this really clear picture 
and along the way Jesus has been teaching what this kingdom is going to be built on, don't don't wait for that moment of you know Jesus saying you know you, some of you won't taste death until you see the Son of Man coming in His glory. You're you're watching Him go to mm-hmm. that spot, right, Peter? You're watching this happen. Yeah. Yeah. Don't sit and wait for me to explain what I mean. I'm showing you in word and deed what this kingdom of which you're going to be the foundation right. is built on. And right. it's teaching and preaching and healing and seeking out the people on the margins. Get get busy living. Don't wait to right. die. Right. Get going. Right. Right. And and I think I think you're right, John. That's that is I think where a lot of the long standing understanding, if you will, of um of kind of uh, post millennialist Roman Catholics, mainline Protestants, Protestants, really derives out of that 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 was the leading up to the pivotal events that Revelation will speak of once it gets written long after this. Yeah. Um, but those are, this is the event, the death and resurrection of Jesus. You know, this is taking up your cross, following him. And, and I think in this text also, there's a real understanding of what that means. It's, it's not a call somehow, as we get from premillennialists, evangelicals, mm-hmm. fundamentalists, trying to help you out as you're following along. It's not a call to get yourself morally right. That's not yeah. what this call is. The call is to follow Jesus. And, and that's what I talked about yesterday a lot in the sermon. It's to follow Jesus. And to know what that looks like is to look at what he said and what he did. And particularly in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, John, you've pointed this out a couple of times, the Gospel of Matthew is centered around this notion of um, Emmanuel or God with us. Mm -hmm. And this notion of kind of overturning how we understood kind of the law functioning. It no longer functions um, as this it still condemns, but it's not like do it in your right, but it's trying to get behind the, the law and and to drag out the love God and love your neighbor mm-hmm. piece of it. Um, these are the ways, and you talked about it too, John, you know, bringing people in from the margins and that's the way in which we are called to follow Jesus. That's kind of what they're talking about and the get busy part. And really, all through the New Testament, those who were writing and and hearing, whether orally or otherwise, this information, really did believe that they were solidly in the end times and that Jesus would be back. Next Tuesday. Yeah. Set, you can set your clock to it. In other words. And I think that statement, too, you know, Jesus is saying this to people in their, like, maybe mid mid to late 20s, early 30s. Life expectancy was, like, 50. Mm-hmm. I mean, they didn't think it would be, they never conceived of a world where you and I would be sitting here no. talking about this. They no. thought it was. Right. Still right. waiting. Yeah, that, that phrase just does not compute. No. For any of them. No. Even in Paul, even for Paul, when you read Paul's writings, Paul really did think he was that, that Jesus would be, would be back any day now, mm-hmm. any day now. And I think I think there's a, a call to us, and, and I think you you said it really right, John. Um, not to wait for some day when you'll finally okay take this seriously or. Um, Figure out forgiveness of a loved one if you're reconciling to that loved one or putting off reconciling to that loved one. But that there's a sense that that love that you are called to live out 
We need to do today, right now, right here, don't wait. And I think that's the heart of kind of getting behind Jesus and taking up our cross. Um, it's not that we're going to bear a cross necessarily. We are taking up crosses, but those crosses, I think, are the crosses of love, forgiveness, service. And yeah, there's going to be times when we are hanging on our crosses, when that forgiveness will be important. And the hope that we hold on to is important. Um, but there's definitely that imminence of getting it done now. Yeah. Want to pray us out? Sure. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Gracious God, you invite us to be workers alongside of you in the kingdom that you bring. Help us as we walk as yet by faith to not be static people, but active people, filled with your spirit that moves us and shakes us and draws us out of complacency into action where we risk being changed and where we see and encounter the people that you draw ever close to you. Help us to take up the cross that your son gladly bears for us, the cross of grace, of mercy, and love. Help us this day to invite people into the shadow of that cross where your arms are stretched out amongst all of us. Keep us as we do that work. Guide us as we do that work. And help us to see that work being done for us as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. Take care.